Hello everyone, welcome to Couchbase Coding with Matthew Groves. This is a 10 minute slice of my day as a developer advocate, live every day on Twitch, YouTube, and Periscope. Check out all the episodes up there, a YouTube link, a tiny URL link there to watch the old episodes. And please email me or tweet me your comments, questions, suggestions, I'd love to hear from you. Today's music in the waiting room was Transmutation by Kara Square. Uh, it was a nice little guitar with some horns. I liked it a lot. Uh, I'm in a different hotel today, so forgive me if the Wi-Fi is a little sketchy. Uh, doing the best that I can. Uh, the webcam seems to be working today, so but it's also I think a little sketchy, so I apologize. I'm about to switch over to my cartoon face again. I see that Calvin's joining for the stream today. Uh, Calvin, sorry about the uh, the waiting time, but I want to give people a chance to you know get in here and uh, get settled and get ready to to watch the video. All right, so today it is another round of Google autocomplete asks, and so I just uh, entered into uh, Google here Couchbase how to, and I've got all these questions here. That people are asking Google about Couchbase. And so I thought I would uh, pick them, pick one of them, and uh, talk about it. So indexing, I think I talked about that a lot yesterday, so maybe I'll leave that for another day. Let's talk about querying today. How to query. So if we look at different ways to get data out of Couchbase, there are five ways I could think of off the top of my head. Uh, one is uh, key value operations. So this is kind of like a query. You have the key. You give it to Couchbase, it gives you the value back. The next one, I think what most people think of when they're actually asking about querying is something like nickel. It's a SQL query. You can uh, you know, type a select or uh, do a join, things like that, and get results back. And these first two can also do mutations as well. So you can set a key value, you can do an insert, update, delete, that sort of thing. Uh, next is full text search. This is more like a search engine. You type in a phrase or a word or some sort of Boolean expression, it'll give you some results back with a, a relevancy score. MapReduce is, is still in Couchbase as of now. It's a way to write a, a, a function that can be parallelized and can run on your data as mutations come in and save those results, sort of like a materialized view done in advance. These two, I don't think there's any mutations possible with these. They're really just different ways to get views of the data back. And the last one is a couple of Couchbase uh, protocols, DCP, which is data change protocol, and XDCR, cross data center replication. These are ways for Couchbase to sort of give you a stream of different events that happen to documents. And XDCR is the protocol that allows Couchbase to synchronize data between clusters. 
Uh, so that is, those are maybe not querying, but there are other ways to get data out of Couchbase. So I'm going to mostly talk about nickel query today. Um, and I'm not going to go into nickel in detail, I'm just going to show you the different ways you can actually execute nickel and the different approaches, different contexts, contexts might be useful for uh, what you're trying to do. There's a comment in the chat room here, I don't know if you'll talk about Couchbase Lite module for React Native. Uh, I did not plan on talking about that today, and in fact I don't do much about Couchbase mobile, I'm more of a server guy, but uh, I would love to have one of the Couchbase uh, mobile developer advocates come on and maybe talk about that. So I will make a note, Couchbase Lite module for React Native. I will see what I can do about that. It's L, uh, let's see, where is the chat? Uh, L, El Medi, uh, that's a comment on YouTube. So I will look into that on Thank you very much. All right, so on to the querying. Uh, the very simplest thing, what I usually do with querying is I go here to the Couchbase console, I click on the Query tab, and I get this nice query workbench. And I can put a nickel query up in here, execute it, and see the results that are just JSON down here at the bottom. I like this workbench a lot, especially when working on more complex queries, answering form questions, things like that. Because I get the syntax highlighting, get some autocompletes, I get this nice little plan view that shows me, you know, is is this core using the right index? I get the bucket insights over here, Enterprise Edition, to show me the shape of the data. It's a really helpful place for me to execute queries. So I'd recommend if you're, for the first time you're trying out queries, you start here in the query workbench to do that. But it's not the only place you can do nickel queries from. So the next thing I want to show you is actually a console app. So I'm running on Windows here, and you can see I've already in the folder Program Files, Couchbase, Server, Bin, and there's lots of command line utilities in here that help you interact with Couchbase. And the one I want to show you is called CBQ. And it, you can give it some command line uh, arguments like uh, credentials, which I have here. I think you can also feed the query right in on the command line. But you can also just uh, execute this and get kind of like a REPL that you can enter queries into. Uh, so I can do this sim similar sort of query, select so t.star from travel sample t, and I'm just going to limit one, because it's going to spit the whole thing out to the console here. So there we go, it's running a query against my Couchbase cluster that I specified. By default it goes to localhost, you can also set at the command line uh, where your cluster is, the IP address, the URL, that sort of thing. All right, and control D to exit out of that. Alright, so that's method two. Now method three is one that I do relatively often as well, is you can actually use a Couchbase SDK to write a query and execute that query through the SDK. So right here, I'm connecting to the cluster, connecting to the travel sample bucket. I have a string I'm defining here in C Sharp. You can do this from Java or Node or all the other SDKs that we support. Create a query object here and then pass in that query object to this bucket API. I'm getting results back as dynamic because it's just quick for me to write an example and write all those results uh, out to console, so I'll go ahead and execute that. Um, but this is, well, it's way too big of a window. Let me just break that down a little bit. But this is, of course, uh, you know, you can pass in uh, all the different settings here under query. You can say, you know, query dot scan consistency, which I've talked about before. You can add parameters. If you want to do parameterization, things of that nature. But then here is the actual console output just getting one result there from travel sample. All right, so SDK is another way. And the last thing I want to cover is uh, the REST API. So Couchbase has a comprehensive REST API. This is mostly for administrative tasks, uh, but there's also a nickel API in there as well that allows you to execute nickel queries via a REST request. I've got Postman up here on the screen. This is just a, a tool you can use to interact uh, with, uh, with the REST API because you can create posts and, and gets and all kinds of stuff. I've got a post request here that's going to slash query slash service. Also note the port number here for the nickel API is 8093, which is different than the normal 8091. And then there's lots of different uh, fields you can pass into this. The, the most basic one I can do is just a, a, a literal statement 
and I've got again that travel sample over here. Let's change it to, uh, to two. All right, and I've also got authorization turned on using basic auth here with my administrator credentials. Top secret administrator credentials. Do not use those in productions and in, in production kits. Uh, so I'll go ahead and execute this, make that post request, and down here at the bottom. I can't really uh, give you any more screen space for some reason. Uh, but you can see that the results, the same as before, it's just returning to results in JSON along with some of the other things like how much time elapsed and the request ID and so on. And you can also do inserts with this as well. As far as I know, you can do kind of mutations with this REST API. So this is not, REST API is not meant to be used directly from your like, JavaScript app in your web browser, but this can be useful if you want to make REST requests uh, from some other service uh, via the REST API. You don't have to involve the SDK uh, or the command line for this. So that's it. Uh, that's four, I covered four methods. The query workbench built into the Couchbase console. Uh, CDQ, the command line utility, that's available on Windows, Linux, and Mac, of course, and Linux and Mac is going to be in different folders than I showed you. Uh, also shows you the SDK. Uh, it's, uh, well, there goes my camera. I told you it was going to be sketchy today. Uh, but the SDK I use was .NET, but it's also, you can do the same, uh, similar sort of thing from Java, from Node, Python, C, PHP, and so on. And the last one was REST API which uh, there's lots of stuff you can do with the Couchbase REST API and nickel requests are one of them. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, I am going to be in Detroit today. Um, <laughs> someone's knocking on the door in my hotel room. Uh, I'll be in Detroit today uh, speaking about NoSQL and then I will be going back to Lansing tomorrow, but I should have enough time to do another stream tomorrow around 12.30 or so. Tune in tomorrow. Uh, to watch some more uh, about Couchbase and we'll do some more Google auto completes asks maybe and that's it thanks very much for watching